Uh, Hello, this is John of the 13 week fiscal program for American prisoners of war. My name is Chief Biko. Today we have Chief Alligator, Chief Quietwater, as well as Chief Black Coat. And again, as always, we like to definitely focus on the first letter in the acronym APOW, which is American. Uh, starting off, we will have Chief Black Coat read the 12 steps. What's going on, y'all? Back at it again. All right. 13 week practical program of action for each American prisoner of war. Number one, learn about the state or states your family originated from. Number two, who established that state? Number three, what tribe or confederacy had jurisdiction over that area prior to the European? Number four, ask all nonprofit organizations you attend, what's your position on reparations? Number five, they either support it or they don't, no support, no money. However, if they support it, then children and adults need weekly classes free of charge about steps one, two, and three, in addition field trips to APLW landmarks, again, it's American prisoner of war, Landmarks in the city, county, and state are needed. Don't support European holidays for the remainder of the 13 week time frame. Number seven, avoid spending money with any small businesses that doesn't hire your people, gas stations, nail salons, subways, corner stores, etc. Number eight, all businesses need operating cash, spend money with American businesses. Number nine, join or all other groups rely on our energy, offering cash to survive, set the trends of making other groups follow our lead and support our clubs, services, products, and entertainment. Number 10, the US government is bankrupt. The Federal Reserve prints money, i.e. quantitative easing. It also burns money, i.e. quantitative teething. The US dollar hasn't been backed by gold since Richard Nixon in 1971, the Gold Standard Act. The government operates off the full faith of its citizens, to pay its debts and taxes. American, American prisoner of wars no longer have faith in the United States government. This is why financial support will be altered, stopped, and redirected. Number 11, teach your kids one hour a day about their history on this land. A, have them learn about an American inventor. B, have them know about our heroes. C, they should know the European that conquered the state you live in. D, they should know the nation of people to the European <clears throat> they should know the people prior to the European invasion, military, and culture. Number 12, practice these steps. Will <clears throat> practicing these steps will educate us on our land. We are coming to America and it attaches us to the history of the laws under the US government. Each state, American prisoners of war, live in should have steps one, two, and three advertised via social media, radio, and newspaper. This in 13 week one physical quarter will bring us together for our common cause. Thank you, Chief Black Coat. Next, we'll have Chief Alligator do the American Inventor for this week. Okay, uh, Chief Alligator. Uh, today's American Inventor is named Thomas Elkins. Uh, he was born 1818 in New York. He died August 10th, 1900. He was a dentist, a surgeon, a pharmacist, and an inventor. Highly skilled man. Uh, he invented the chamber commode. Uh, which uh, Chief Biko is showing an image of that invention. Uh, federal patent number is 122518. And the date for this invention was January 9th, 1872. And the reason uh, why we're showing this image is I just wanted to highlight, uh, we're, these men are scientists. Um, you can look at the math because you can't build anything without knowing angles. So clearly this man was a mathematician and he was a Lord because he was a creator. So here's what he created. So you can see, not only could you do number two or do number one on this device, he had mirrors so you can get yourself together. You can see drawers uh, for the women that may want to use makeup. You see the uh, basin with the bowl of water, to wash your face in the morning. Uh, so some of us have heard about the word commode when we were younger, go to the commode, or some of us have heard, oh, I'm going to sit on the throne. You can see the bucket where your uh, waste from your body will be captured. And so, yeah, y'all can share what y'all thoughts are on this. I just thought it was uh, important 
that these are scientists and we have to break this slave narrative that schooling always tries to depict our people. Uh, it's impossible with that detailed of architecture that was done on this in the 1800s. Anybody want to share on that? Oh, and yeah. the percentage of income coming from the toilet or commode industry. So the last thing I would say on that is when we talk about reparations, it's not just cut a check, which is the theme that goes along on, on, on social media. It's deeper than a check because a check right. would then be deposited and you would get fiat in return. Fiat is not money. It's the gold in Fort Knox that they claim that's actually our ancestors. It's the resources in the land. So reparations would be becoming the management class of the inventions, i.e. that our ancestors created. Let me say that one more time. Our ancestors have already done the work and created the invention. Out of that atom or invention comes manufacturing. Out of that manufacturing comes an industry. We are supposed to inherit we're supposed to be the management class of these industries that our ancestors already created. It's not just a right. I should have right there. No, back to Thomas Elkins, you know, you just see the ingenuity on this man's, you know, hands. He built a whole station kind of like an all-in-one for you to kind of get ready and get about your day. Uh, but to me, it's, you know, if we look at our children today growing up, you know, the things they do as children, you can see we come from a line of scientists. You know, you, our children can do pretty much anything nowadays when it comes to technology, and they figured it out like that. And then before times, when we were still using, uh, you know, more so Legos or blocks, we would build, you know, things I'd never seen before. So you can see the skill set being there, and then you get into the school system, and it kind of just drives you out and make you kind of narrow asking questions like, what do you want to do when you grow up? And then everybody has to choose or because what's popular in that mm. area. And now you're kind of throwing away what you naturally have. So yeah, people like Thomas Elton, you can see it. This is where we come from. This is an American, you know? If you claim to be an American and you know you stand on it, you come from inventors. Uh, his background is deeper than this, but yeah, we showed it and we think it's amazing to see. Our women still use things like this today. And just looking at the complexity of this, this um, chamber commode, that kind of resembles what lavish bathrooms and mansions look like now. You know, you have mm. your vanities in there, you have the dual, upper um, scale. yeah, the upper scale type of thing. So even though this was very compact, the concept are still um, being used to this day. It's just in a, you know, more Different. upscale and luxury, um, right. but the concept, the concept I see now comes from this. Right. Sure. Right. Definitely a more modernized, uh, like you said, vanity. Right. Everything. 1872. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That it. Meaning like, oh, this is the first time. Right. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and continue with the quote here. Uh, the quote that I'm going to read for this week from Dr. Carter G. Woodson is uh let me see which one did i like here it's always too many good ones i'm telling you <laughs> gonna do with you uh, actually yeah number 10 negroes do not need someone to guide them to what persons of another race have developed they must be taught to think and develop something for themselves it is most pathetic to see negroes begging for uh begging others for a chance as we have been doing recently. Do not force us into starvation, we said. Let us come into your stores and factories and do a part of what you are uh, doing to profit by our trade. Basically, exactly what we just uh, discussed. The Negro as a slave developed this fatal sort of dependency and restricted mainly to menial service and drudgery during nominal freedom. He has, he has not grown out of it. Now the Negro is facing the ordeal of either learning to do for himself or to die out gradually in the bread line in the ghetto. So again, basically exactly what Chief Alligator was alluding to, Chief Black Coat, as well as Chief uh, Quietwater. We created these industries, but at some point we wanted to be in their business. Even though we created the industry, we wanted to be underneath them in their business. And that can go from, you know, segregation or anything like that 
which we always say is just a construct of military occupation. Um, next, we'll have Chief Quiet Water read off the maroon historical points and legal definitions. All right. So I'm going to start with the maroon historical points. Number one was a person escaping slavery, seeking freedom or breaking the law. Number two, providing unity and a strong defense came first. Number three, maroon leaders were first and foremost military figures. Number four, maroon, maroons established guerrilla warfare, planting sharp sticks in thick grass. Number five, maroons knew their European enemy, language, defense, and plans. And then the legal definitions, number one, an American. American is a native of America. Number two, descendant, one who follows in the bloodline of an ancestor, either lineally or collaterally. Number three, slavery, a situation in which one person has absolute power over the life, fortune, and liberty of another. Number four, prisoner of war, a person, usually a soldier who is captured by or surrenders to the enemy in wartime. Number five, school and institution at which instruction is given in a particular discipline. And number six, education and enlightening experience. Thank you, Chief Quietwater. Uh, last but not least, we'll go ahead and read off the important steps here or important readings uh, that we highlighted within the Constitution. The first one will be from Article 1, Section 10, no state shall enter into any treaty, alliance, or confederation, grant letters of marquee and reprisal, coin money, emit bills of credit, make anything but gold and silver coin a tender in payment of debts. So basically exactly um, what Chief Alligator was, Alligator was stating in regards to reparations, fiat, we not, we not want no fiat. We need the resources. The resources are exactly what this is, silver and gold. Because one, it comes from the land. It actually comes from this land. So again, we created these in industries. So we don't want fiat to pay for our industries. We want our industries back. We want our resources back. And we want the land back in regards to reparations. Next, we'll scroll down to Article 6. And Article 6 here basically just highlights that the treaty is the supreme law of the land. This constitution and the laws of the United States which shall be made in pursuance thereof and all treaties made or which shall be made under the authority of the United States shall be the supreme law of the land and the judges in every state shall be bound thereby anything in the constitution or laws of any state to the contrary notwithstanding. So again, the um, treaty is the supreme law of the land. We mentioned a lot of treaties uh, last uh, last year in that fiscal quarter or that fiscal year, uh, highlighting these treaties and highlighting who we actually signed or who our ancestors actually signed these treaties with, which was that rogue military. And also want to make sure that we highlight who has complete control of the militia. So section two here, I believe it's article one, article two, section two. The president shall be the commander in chief of the army, navy of the United States and of the militia of several states. So again, the president is the commander in chief of the army, navy, as well as the militia of several states. And that is important to understand and important to overstand and comprehend in regards to our readings. Uh, Cause one thing we like to see is, you know, we always state it's a civil rebellion. It wasn't a war. And we say that because in their constitution, Congress is the only one who can declare war. And that was actually in section, I know it's article one, let me scroll down here. I think it's section. I saw the brother Raspy Riles, you know, speak on the civil war. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I mentioned it being a rebellion, he, you know, he rejected saying it wasn't a rebellion, it was more so, uh, a war between the North and the South on whatever, whatever, I'm not sure. You know, it never came out to what it was, but, mm -hmm. you know, we still have to understand like you just said, it was a rebellion, it's right there, you know. Right here, right there. section eight, the Congress shall have power to lay and collect taxes 
And this is basically listing what the Congress have power to do. So if we go down here, the Congress shall have power to what? Declare war, grant letters of marquee and reprisal, and make rules concerning captures on both land and water. So right here, if we're understanding their system, because again, as chief or as um, we can call him chief, as Dr. Carter G. Wood stated, you need to basically be um, be a uh, learned individual, basically be a, a lawyer in their in their law, be um, right. what is the word? Be a knowledgeable a in their law, right. a student, correct, a student of their law to understand pretty much your enemy. And that goes back to our maroon historical points as well as everything else, basically being in alignment to understand your enemy and know how to maneuver and handle them in, a, um, in the correct way. So again, as he stated, Chief, uh, Chief Black Coat Rapsy Raw said is a war, but that's not what is aligning up underneath their government. Their government. Right. Correct. For their documents. Uh, Chief, uh, you said Raspy Rawls? Rawls, um, that chief from out there in Louisiana. Okay, so he's saying that there is a civil war? saying there was a civil war or he didn't necessarily say it was a civil war i'm not gonna misquote him as been following him for years um but he rejected the idea that it was a rebellion that's fine so what what, what i do when i run across people who haven't read the document right give them the document and walk away only thing you can do is lay the information at their feet right but everybody cannot reverse engineer a scenario and so that's mm -hmm. going to be a problem with us moving forward where once they read it, it's going to be hard to accept it because you've been so brainwashed through the school system to believe the lie. So, yeah, that's to believe thing. another man's writing. And again, they're getting this information quote unquote, from books, expensive books. People, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming Europeans writing down what's going on. But again, I always say. But it's not coming from there. It's not coming from the. Okay, so let's go there. <laughs> if he's reading the book, why don't you read what that president wrote at that time? Mm. So did right. Andrew Johnson and go with that? Lie? Yeah, did Andrew Johnson lie? He was the president. Knew what did we right. just highlight in the Constitution? Who is the president? The commander in chief of what? The army and navy. So you're going to take somebody who wasn't there, who wrote about the shit, but right. not the actual commander in chief of their army. Right. You're at. You're not in alignment. Correct. <laughs> basically. So again, the, the land, yeah. Correct. And basically, <laughs> like Chief Um Alligator stated, you just present the info, let them decide on what they want uh, want to do with it. It's one thing to be lied to, is one thing to lie to yourself. Right. Plain and simple. Everybody has their own beliefs. This is this is kind of getting into like a, a kind of a belief system that today's time when it's it's not even that necessary when this is the document. Mm -hmm. But you know, per this government on this land, so it's like, damn, I gotta debate niggas talking about a book i'm <laughs> we we know we reading we know we reading right. uh we're gonna start here on section seven <laughs> uh did anybody want to go ahead and pick up here or i can start off if you like i'll jump off the porch uh for you okay uh, i just made a little note before we start working this one so we're going to be talking about the labor rates for the district attorneys the marshals the deputies and the clerks that's what gotcha. this section so we'll have so we're framing it so we'll understand as we do it Makes sense. Um, and be it further enacted that the district attorneys, the marshals, their deputies, and the clerks of the said district and territorial courts shall be paid for their services the like fees as may be allowed to them for similar services in other cases. All right. So we just clearly understand they're about to be paid just like in other cases. That's what I take from this. Everybody in alignment with that? Yeah. Yeah, everybody, they're making sure everybody's getting a cut. You know, what, what, what's going to make you continue to uh, do all of this injustice? You know, right now, you're, again, we're always at war when it comes to these times. So give them a little fiat. Why not? Well, they're already going to fiat then, but give them a little, give them a little something, something. <laughs> Break them off. So it says, um, in all cases where the proceedings are before a commissioner, that's key, he shall be entitled to a fee of $10 in full for his service in each case. All right, so they just itemized right here is what I'm gathering. And they're saying that the commissioner is presiding over a case, not the judge, but the commissioner. He gets $10 per case. 
Mm. So you can see a quota system is going to come out of this. Oh, Clearly, so that's an incentive. Yeah, now that he knows he get $10 a head, now you can see he's going to start doing the math on it. And you can see how they're going to start running a lot of, yeah, they're going to start running people through this kangaroo system, if you will. Um, where am I? At? Okay. Inclusive of all services incident to such arrest and examinations, the person or persons authorized to execute the process to be issued by such commissioners for the arrest of offenders against the provisions of this act shall be entitled to a fee of five dollars for each person he or they may arrest and take before any such commissioner as aforesaid so here you see them breaking bread the commissioner like i'm gonna get ten dollars and i'm gonna give you half of it or i'm gonna give you five to bring them before me so i get ten you get five you go get them i pay you five you bring them before me i'm, I'm gonna get ten Anybody want to say anything on that? Mm -hmm. Good. Sorry. Okay. Uh, with such other fees as may be deemed reasonable by such commissioner for such other additional services as may be necessarily performed by him or them. So that's the flat rate. He's going to get the flat rate $10. The guy who's capturing the person, bringing them before the commissioner gets a flat rate of $5, but the commissioner can add on other fees to make it more lucrative to both yeah. of them. Sounds like you're like a bounty. That's what I was going to say. It sounds like that too. Okay. Then he gives an example, such as attending at the examination. So that's the first way you can get extra money. You want to highlight that? Such as attending. Yep. And then go back. Yep. Oh, attending an excellent wow so just coming yep just going through sitting there through the court proceedings so such as attending mm. at the examination keeping the prisoner in custody and That's providing right. him with food and lodging during his detention and until the final determination of such commissioner so that five dollars for capturing him can turn into more money why if you sit there doing the court case you get extra money based on what the commission want to give you if you're if you're monitoring him while he's in prison before examination you'll get broke off if you're providing him food and lodging you'll get broke off so we can see this is human trafficking and they've itemized it mm. they're gonna they're gonna pay you they, they've itemized they're gonna pay you per thing that you said you've done to that commissioner like look i got i, I got i got such and such back over here in the shack we giving them uh, three pieces of bread a day and three cups of water. Okay, I'm gonna pay you extra. Y'all want to build on that? Nah, yeah. Just, you know, seeing this government, you know, move forward on this land, watching the documents, where we're reading them, breaking them down. So we're seeing how this prison system today came about. Right. That's <laughs> what I was gonna say. Just how it all. This is where it started the concept of it started right here and how they built up on it from then until now it's the this same is. um same concept they basically creating the um another industry mm -hmm. it's just you know the foundation yes. of creating that industry like um chief uh black code as well as chief quietwater said we're just seeing yes. the foundation of that that industry that it's is current on. present day a very lucrative mm -hmm. industry correct there's an industrial yeah. system yeah you know billions trillions um i just always want to highlight 1866 as well like this isn't you know how we always assume oh such a long time ago once we understand these numbers going forward it's like i was just we're moving forward with this new government this isn't 1600s this right thing, it's not that long two so generations the, bro that's the highlight of these as we continue moving forward. Look at these dates. Like, we, we're thinking like this is, has been forever. No, this, this is new. This Ain't is new. number two, two eighty year olds. Right. <laughs> Ain't number two eighty year olds. Yeah. So it says, and in general, for performing such other duties as may be required in the premises. So anything else that you're doing. As in general, for performing such other duties as may be required in the premises, such fees to be made up 
in conformity with the fees usually charged by the officers of the courts of justice within the proper district or county. That's key. That's now we're seeing two parallel systems of slavery being set up. This is coming from up under the War Department through mm. the Freedmen's Bureau Act. So whatever the sheriff would get in a normal courtroom under their system, those fees are going to run concurrent with the commissioner and whoever he assigns to go arrest the person, house them, feed them, and whatever other general uh, duties that they're going to so you can see that. And so now you got two systems. You got a wow. system under the war department, and you got their court system coming up under right. the legislative branch. Right. So you got it's almost like they got public private. The public side would be everything coming up under the legislative. The private side is going to be everything coming up under this war department, and their pay scale is going to be similar, but the names or the titles are going to be different. Mm. Okay. He's got it highlighted right here. Such fees to be made up in conformity. Let me mute y'all. I got some back feed coming in. Uh, such fees to be made up in conformity with the fees usually charged by the officers of the courts of justice within the proper district or county as near as may be practicable and paid out of the treasury of the United States. So that's where all of this is coming from. The treasurer of the United States is breaking off the judicial branch officers of the court and the treasury is going to be breaking off under the through the war department what they got going on through the uh uh freedmen's bureau in the eight uh which the 1866 civil rights act falls up under the freedmen's bureau act which is up under the war department if you can pull up that map real quick chief biko just so people can see the war department so we can be clear. I don't want to beat a beat the dead horse at this point. We know we're under military occupation at this point. We've already proved that, but we just want to let them see the map. Okay. So under their war department, which is where the Freedmen's Bureau Act through Congress comes up under, you can see the different departments. You got the Department of the East. You got the Department of the West. You can see the Mississippi. Can you put your cursor where the Mississippi River would be? So this is Boom. a full occupation map right now. Right. Boom. So you can see the War Department of the East is going to be everything east of the Mississippi. The War Department of the West is everything kind of in the middle of North America. But you can see right there on the other side of the Mississippi is the Department of the West. You can see Texas has its own department. You can see over here what used to be Mexico government before Europeans started military occupying that. They got a New Mexico military department. They got a Utah military department. They got an Oregon military department and they got a department for California. So when we say it's coming up under the war department, just want you to see the map, this shit real. Anybody wanna build on that? No, just a great map, you know, to always read right on. Um, it shows you literally, you know, all the military districts right now. So when we talk about the treasury breaking off two planes, there's two, there's two different maps. There's that map they can go by as far as which department is breaking off, what system they got going on. I totally agree with that. Totally agree with that. And uh, just for emphasis, this is right in alignment with what we're reading as far as the same timeline. So this was what created uh, 1862. So it's not like, oh, well, that's after the Civil Rebellion. You know, no, nah, this is right in the heat of the rebellion. So again, this is how they separated and uh, sectioned off their military departments. <laughs> I'll pick, I'll pick back up. Um, uh, share my screen. All right. <clears throat> okay. Treasurer of the United States. Okay. 
So, and paid out of the treasury of the United States on the certificate of the judge of the district within which the arrest is made. So that's where the two mm. parallel slavery court systems are gonna cross paths because mm. they need a judge of the district to sign off on anything coming out that war department. Any arrest made, the judge coming from up under the judicial branch of their government is gonna sign off on whatever the hell is going on out of that war department. Per that district. Right. Mm -hmm. And now we can see the broadness of these districts. You know, it's it, when it's become this is new military occupation. So it ain't like how it is today where we're it's, it's more confined than it was then. Look how much space is in between these districts. So we got one man accounting for the whole Northeast. This am I not alarming rules? It probably, would be more, it probably would be a panel of judges, but you got the right concept. Yeah. Okay, be. but yeah, but of course, because that's a lot of space, but how broad that district alone is, that's a lot of that's a lot of space. Right. It would be account for one man being locked up or whatever we got going on out here. Still definitely in alignment though with today. Um just based off of what I'm reading here, the judge of the district within the arrest, uh, they have to sign off on something. The rest they of they still do that with no knock warrants. Don't they have to have mm. the judge sign off before they can actually do anything as and far as any go. warrants? Right. Mm -hmm. So again, we can see how this is still in uh, a line or still parallels to what we're dealing with today. Mm -hmm. I'll finish off this last sentence. And to be recoverable from the defendant as part of the judgment in case of conviction, they're not spending anything. Follow me. The treasurer of the United States is going to pay through the War Department, the commissioners. However, whatever they pay, the $5 to bring them in, the $10 to the commissioner, the extra money to house them, the extra money to feed them, all of that money they're going to get back. How? Through the defendant as part of the judgment. So your sentence is the is the return on the investment that they spent to get your ass so they're not so like restitution slavery. and <laughs> slavery right slavery right. yeah 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 <laughs> basically exactly what they said you could it off until what until convicted now now That's let's right. go a little bit deeper because now mm. we're under, we've been through a war called mass incarceration through the 1990s. Mm -hmm. That's our generation, myself and Chief Quietwater. Let's dig a little deeper. This is why they won't defund the police. There mm -hmm. are people who look like us that their retirement is based on the return that's coming from the people that they wrongfully convicted through the war drugs. It's a racket. It's a criminal racket. I mean, we know today that it costs, you know, some prisons, what, 800000 700000 for that sale just to sit by themselves every night. So when you hear these numbers, it's like, whoa, where, they, where all this money coming from for them, man? It costs that much to sit in there. This is, right. this is a, a pyramid scheme on a legal, illegal level with whoever, whoever. Yeah. I think I said this a couple of weeks ago. This is where they get that escrow account from. They're going to give you the time your time is directly proportional to the financial instruments maturing. In other words, you're going to sit in that cell until everybody who's contracted or, 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 or got paid to lock your ass up, everybody's going to be recompensated whatever they received or were supposed to receive while your ass is in, in, in escrow sitting in the cell. And, and, and so we're looking at how what we call slavery is uh, really mass incarceration. Business. This, no, it's business. not business. No, this ain't business. This is, this is, you're walking in there and you're not understanding that the judge is looking at you as an investment interest, that sheriff that's in there, officer of the court, he's looking at you as an investment interest, that court reporter is looking at you as an investment interest, both lawyers who are officers of the court as well are looking at you as an investment interest. The probation officer that's coming under another agency sitting in that courtroom is all, everybody's looking at you like how much money 
How much, how much time you willing to give him, Judge? Because that's going to determine how much money we get off this case. I'll stop right there. Mm. Sit in that stew for a minute. Let that shit marinate. <laughs> yeah, seriously. You know, they were they were they were pricing our bodies. How long is he gonna live? How much work can I get out of? Them? We're, we're, we're talking about peasants coming over here and they're, they're having fun with this shit. Um yeah, and we're seeing again back to the numbers or back to the dates, 1866. We just talked about Thomas Elton. What for Thomas Elton? Elton got caught slipping at it. What can we get out of this man? Oh, whoa, we can do this and that and that. And then I always go back to the fact, because this is my first time seeing how this was first broken down and constructed, how um, it goes back to the fact of how we just don't know. It's just a lack of knowledge um, because this is current day prison system, jail system and everything. So you know, we just have to continue to try to educate others and just pour into the younger people so that they know that this plan has never, I mean, it, it's current day. So it started back in 1866, like um, Chief Black Coat says, and it's, it's, it hasn't changed. So I think that's important for us to know. I like what you said when you said try to educate others. At the end of the day, this is a spiritual channel, no matter what we want to call it. This is us trying to help our people in the way of, hey, let's just get on, let's get on YouTube and, and read these documents. That's, of course, we're not just talking to ourselves. We could just do that on Zoom and without us right. uploading it, you know? So this is this is a part of the, the move forward. You see this government today is all over the place. We don't know what's going on with the United States government today. So with us just continuously doing little things like this as the American, don't get creepy. This is just gonna get creepy. People gonna be like, "Oh my God, what was this? Where are these Django's come from?" <laughs> For real. No facts. Facts. No, I agree with that. Everything is is crazy. We thinking stuff just happens or it's haphazard. You know, just stuff happens. But this is all planned out. That's what we're seeing. This was all planned out strategically. Okay, we're going to drop this, then we're going to drop this next. Basically like a rollout for an album release. We're going to put this mixtape out. All right, let's see. Let's see how that single hit first. Trial and error. Then we're going to drop the what's album. Working? <laughs> then we're going to do the, the tour. It's like they had, they showing structure. Showing structure, basically. Nice. Um, I'll pick up here section eight and be it further. Hold on, before you go in, I just wanted to just, just context. We're, we're describing the president powers in this section. Go ahead. Got you, got you. And be it further enacted that whenever the president of the United States shall have reason to believe that offenses have been or are likely to be committed against the provisions of this act within any judicial district, it shall be lawful for him in his discretion to direct the judge marshal and district attorney of each district to attend at such place within the district. So again, as Chief Alligator alluded to, just framing the president's power uh, that he has in regards to this act. Uh, so he can pretty much um, assign any judge uh, to any district uh, regarding the uh, regarding the a violation of this act. That's what I'm getting thus far. All right, now hold what you got. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna stop here, right? I thought in the court system, the only people or panel that the court, the, 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 legis the judicial branch would answer to the Supreme Court ultimately under their government, correct? Y'all all, all right. agree with that? That's the highest um, court. Underneath so their government. How, so how is the president over a court system? Because it comes up under the War Department and he's the commander in chief. Makes uh, sense. Did you catch it? Yeah, great he's point. He's not man. supposed to be dictating to no district judge where you need to go. Yeah, because yeah. it's not under the judicial branch. It's two, it's two criminal systems running parallel at the same time. You just don't know what jurisdiction you in. Like y'all caught it. Yeah, yeah, of course. You saw when Trump was in office how things got so much crazy for all these districts. It's like, whoa, Trump, we ain't 
we ain't on that no more right now. We're trying to keep the peace. Trump like, oh, take it off. And then everybody started to show their colors in all these states. So it's, you, you can see who becomes the real leader in a time of chaos moving for war. Facts. Facts. Now, that's a great point both of you guys just made there. And like you said, it just highlights the um, the power he has and why he has that power, because, again, it's coming underneath the War Department. So that confusion of, you know, not understanding what system you're or what rules you're playing underneath can get a nigga caught up in their system. So that's a great, great point there. Uh, I'll continue. And for such time as he may designate. So for however long the president uh, deems necessary for that judge, marshal, or district attorney to be in that district for the purpose of the more speedy arrest and trial of a person's uh, charged with a violation of this act. So again, any person found to be violating this uh, Civil Rights Act, and it shall be the duty of every judge or other officer when any such requisition shall be received by him to attend at the place and for time and for the time therein designated. So again, uh, it's pretty much up to the president how long said judge, marshal, district attorney is going to be in that specific district um, to make sure that this person or persons will be charged uh, for violating this act. That's pretty much what I got from there. I'm thinking about traffic court real quick. And the reason why I say traffic court is you see that gentleman in that black robe and you just assume it's a judge. But if you roll yourself back to 1866 and let's say I got roped off under this federal act that's coming through the War Department, which is underneath the commander in chief, which is the president. I don't know this. I'm just thinking I'm in a regular courtroom. The person who has on that black robe, I have no idea. He's just a commissioner. He ain't even a fucking judge. Correct. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> you see Correct. What I'm, I'm thinking I'm going before a judge, and this motherfucker is really a commit. And it's the same thing with traffic court. The motherfuckers are not judges. Mm. I just mm. said something. Yeah, it's always a chessboard. Man, I didn't know that. I thought they were. And, mm. and, what, and what do they tell us, Chief Black Coat, Chief Quiet Water, and Chief? Pico, when you go within their jurisdiction, they say what? And this is a maximum of life. Ignorance of the law is no excuse. No excuse. No excuse. Yes, your ass right. in here. You don't know what. Right. The fuck you don't on. know. <laughs> Dang, you think I'm crazy. important, huh? <laughs> oh. mm-hmm. But they act. They act biggity. You know, when you go into mm-hmm. a court, and I and I'm all, you know, getting older, having more issues with the law, and not anything crazy, but just going into those courtrooms. <laughs> And having to speak with a judge, the more mature you come with the knowledge, the, when you the tone can change once they realize, oh, mm-hmm. this yeah, ain't this yeah. ain't that type of dude. And it's funny right. you said that. And, they can, and when you look at them, they see it like, okay, nah, nah, I can't pull this <laughs> over him. Yeah, I can't <laughs> no, pull the, I can't pull the veil over him. No, you're right though. It's it, and it's basically like you're alluding you to in Chief Alligator said. Else. It's the 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 fakeness or the facade of power. It's fear. You ain't got no power, but he's right. acting like it. But when you be like, when you act like that, he gonna fold. He, right. gonna, he, he gonna do the exact opposite. Oh no no no! What what's going on with this? Oh no no! We're gonna throw that out the window. We're gonna throw that. Right. Out. You're not Level supposed to be here. Correct. Correct. Mm-mm. Now, just one more one more brain one more brain thought on that. Mm-hmm. That's why individual states tried to make it illegal for us to read and we see the derivative of that in today's right world, where niggas be like man fuck that shit i just went right. down there and said yeah they want you to do that yeah come on down there. right you don't want to read anything set. got you mm-hmm. and right that's up. how it hit us that's how the, from my experience black and white yep. you read the documents man and you start seeing you get treated differently. And we talked yeah. about that a couple of weeks ago. You get treated differently because you start to see this shit is like Alice in Wonderland. It's make believe. Yeah. Make believe. Yeah. Facts. Facts. Uh, section nine. I think this is also just basically showing or telling, uh, explaining the powers of the president still. Uh, section nine, and be it further enacted that it shall be lawful for the president of the United States or such person as he may empower for that purpose. So any person that he gives that power to can also pretty much do whatever is about to be explained here uh, to employ such part of the land or naval forces of the United States or of the militia 
as shall be necessary to prevent the violation and enforce the due execution of this act. So this right here definitely goes back to understanding exactly what uh, jurisdiction or what department we're underneath. Again, the War Department. And it's saying that the president can appoint somebody pretty much his power. Again, what do we say the president, the commander in chief had the power of what? The Navy, Army, and the militia of several states. So this is basically explaining that he can hand that power over to a person and they will still be able to um, at least execute it within the bounds of this act is what I'm seeing here. Well, what he's this doing is, is he's civil making rights him a treasure. He's making him a treasure. Let's look at that real carefully. Mm. It shall be lawful for the president of the United States or such person as he may empower for that purpose to what? Employ mm -hmm. such part of the land or naval forces of the United States. He's going to give them the bag. So he can go and be like, look, Navy man, I know look, he can go talk to the jerk, the whatever, general, colonel, whatever right. his name is. Look, I need about 20 of your warlords. Uh, I got him on. I got him. I got I, I can take care right. of him. The president's already okayed me. Show him the document. Get the money. Another example of how they took our towns. Mm -hmm. They could yeah. do it under being sworn as a deputy or they could do it based off the government through this act empowering them. They can come burn your whole shit down. This is how yeah. they took our towns through this 1866 Civil Rights Act. And we think this shit right. for us. <laughs> Listen, exactly. I wanted to point that. Like, it's 1866 Civil Rights Act, you know, with Section 8 was like, all right. It sounded like the same. Then it just gets medieval in Section 9. Hold on. If you try to get too, you know, but wow, this is what we also can do. And like Chief Alligator said, you know, on the executive level, they're making all you look dip these judges and these marshals, treasurers in their districts or wherever to pretty much empower them on the, on that level. So now they're big headed. What what happened? You, he looked at a white girl, he stepped, mm -hmm. what? And now you get the rollouts of you know what still happens today. And, Great point. And, and just put the icing on the top of what Chief Black Coat just said. So I give Chief Black Coat 200 fiat. Mm -hmm. Chief Blackcoat then goes out, gets him some uh, militia men, some Navy per personnel. He brings that receipt when they go before the commissioner. They do the math on it and they say, okay, the president gave him $200. How much time do we have to give this man to get that 200 back? You see the business? They're gonna get that 200, whatever the president gave you to go get them people to go catch whoever they are trying to catch. They're gonna get it back out of the time they give his ass. Right. So they ain't spending nothing. Nothing. It's all it's all investments. I'm just gonna break even and just and build this world out off of your labor. Again, we're talking about the Thomas Elkins. They're finding these people. You can still hear today about scientists being trapped because you know they fucked around and found out they were smart as hell, so they got them doing dumb shit in power plants. It's, we're watching this military occupation take all of our geniuses and just. And how it was rolling out. We're watching. Their, we're reading their documents. This shit is. This shit is. This is crazy. Medieval. It's crazy. Any thoughts on that, uh, Chief Quietwater? I agree with everyone. I mean, it's it's just crazy how they they had a plan, like you just like you said earlier, Chief Biko. They definitely um, stuck with their plan, and they were organized in regards to how they set all of this stuff up and and get exactly what it was, what they intended to. Um, tended to get out of it. So I agree with everyone. We're on, all on the same page. Sure, for sure. Go ahead and finish off this last section. Um, let me see. All right, section 10, and be it further enacted that upon all questions of law arising in any cause under the provisions of this act, a final appeal may be taken to the Supreme Court of the United States. So I think, again, this kind of alludes to what um, Chief Alligator was stating earlier about Section eight, the president, I thought that the Supreme Court was the highest court on the land. But again, you see how they're running it parallel to each other. So, yeah, the president got his shit going on in this War Department. But if you really want to appeal, I guess you can go to the Supreme Court and do it. That's what I'm getting from it. Right. And th 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 this is where there's no honor amongst thieves to me, because you're contradicting yourself. 
Because right. you're coming up under the War Department and you're saying that the commander in chief can basically do what the hell he won't. But then you're turning around and saying, oh, if you don't like the way he fucks you over, you can come through the judicial branch and come to the Supreme Court. But all of y'all are in the room together looking at looking at our, our, our ancestors as investments. So what's the story with this guy? What's the story? Mm, as investments? Well, we've got him. We roped him off down there in Mississippi. He owned about 200 acres of land. And uh, we've got him in a chain game down there in Mississippi right now on a hundred year sentence. So basically that's going to pay for your salary for the remainder of your time. As pre- and so that's what's going on. They're talking numbers when it's really our bodies sitting in these goddamn cells. I'll stop. This shit is modern day slavery. And let me just, if slavery was so bad in the 1800s, why are more of us locked up now in 2022 than it was in 1866? So when y'all keep talking about everybody was a slave 160 years ago, that's a damn lie. It's more of us locked up now than it was back then. We got the most that's prisoners crazy. inside of cells than any planet or any uh, other continent on this planet. It's wow. actually kind of creepy when you look at the numbers because it's like, what are we doing so aggressively that they can kind of mm. keep crime lower and right. also incarcerate less but we incarcerate more and have more crime. Hmm. Because most of the people are um, in there for, um, you know, innocent yes. people. Yeah. yeah, innocent people. Hyper, oh, an ounce of weed. hyper policing, hyper policing again to meet what? They they explained it in the thing, quotas. We right, right. Quotas. We, that's again, where it started, quotas. right. We got to make sure we meet these numbers. And that money this was good. Okay. Yeah. And they perfected yeah. it. For real, perfected it. I want to say these dates here are just the uh dates in which it passed in the Senate and then the House, uh, April 6th and April uh 9th of 1866. April 9th, of uh, 1866. Mm-hmm. So, in a week. so, again, question to you all, as well as the, the listeners and viewers, did the Civil Rights Act of 1866 apply to us? Not at all. Wow, oh. If it applied to us, then we would have been pretty much managing the judicial branch, which would be their court system, which mm-hmm. doesn't even make sense because it's their system. Right. So that's another thing mm-hmm. I notice when people are talking, when they say we, that shows that the brainwashing, you haven't been unbrainwashed from what they, what they uh, implanted in you through the school system. You can't get we out of the people, out of this the we the people of 1776 why are you trying to act like that those people come from your family but that comes to the school system who would think that george washington is american from our bloodline and it's funny Another you said this is, 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 i'll just throw it out there real quick the ukrainian situation when you see mm-hmm. people like us talking about we the fuck are you talking about this is european infighting It's got nothing to do with you, but you're so indoctrinated and you don't know the difference between the land and the United States government. That's two separate things. The United States government has citizens. The land has tribes and confederacies. And so it's going to be hard for us to understand that you come from a confederacy. And the Iroquois Confederacy was the first confederacy that taught these Europeans how to construct their Articles of Confederation and how mm. to construct their Constitution. So you in denial every time you tell a redneck that he was a Confederate instead of calling him a bold-faced liar and why are you wanting to be my great-grandparents so bad? Until you get that, you right. don't understand what's going on. Right. Right. And it's funny you said that we, because um, I want to say... Uh, and I don't want to misquote the brother, but uh, what's his name? Dave Calloway had stated something regarding that, you know, the order number 15 applied to us in regards to our 40 acres and a mule. But that's okay. not that's that's not what uh, is in alignment with what we just read as far as not only the 1866, but the Freedmen's Bureau as well. Uh, and again, this is coming from uh, a general. And again, where is it saying? Hailing from the military division of the Mississippi. So as we already saw, that would be basically the military department of the East. Mm -hmm. 
So let's just go ahead and kind of break this down if we have a little bit of time to show exactly what um, I believe he was trying to get at in regards to this. So we go. So we gonna get into this tonight. Might as well go ahead and jump I off mean, the porch with it. Okay. How y'all feel about that? So basically, no, we, we just read one document, the Freedmen's Act, where right. what, what what we hear amongst our people is forty acres of the mule. Okay. So we read we debunked one document that said that. Now right. we're getting ready to bump the second document where we like to say, oh, this government owe us 40 acres and a mule. All right. And just not, not even going to get all the way into it today. We want to actually break this down, but just want to highlight certain points that our people, our people like to cling on to that right. doesn't show in the Freedmen's Bureau. So just in this first uh, section here, the islands of Charleston, South Carolina, the abandoned mm. rice fields along the rivers uh, wow. for 30 miles back from the sea and the country bordering the St. John Rivers, Florida, uh, St. John's River, Florida, are reserved and set apart for the settlement of the Negroes now made free by the acts of war and the proclamation of the President of the United States. Pause. When we read the Emancipation Proclamation, uh, I don't think they even specified, they didn't specify at all, I don't even have to think, they didn't specify at all that Negroes were made free. So again, that's the contradiction between the commander in chief and a general. Right. So they're not in alignment right now. Yet we're trying to pick certain things out of certain acts and make it apply to us. When that's again, the their CEO said, none of this shit applies to you. We ain't specifying nothing to y'all, but their 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 customer service rep said, "Oh yeah, Negroes got it." The customer rep is wrong. He doesn't he doesn't run the the company, and this is exactly what I'm trying to highlight here in this uh, particular um, order. So we'll even go down a little bit further at Boo. Uh, let's Boo right there. Let's let's let's, let's park and okay. let's park and turn the music up real quick. What y'all <laughs> got to say on that, Chief Black Coat, Chief uh, Quiet Water? What y'all got to say on that? That's the first time in any document we've seen Negro. So yeah, what y'all want to say on that real quick? No, you're right. It, it goes um, goes back to what he said. It's my fir the first time that we've ever seen that. So why are they putting that into this document now? Right. My heart started racing. I said, "Hold oh, <laughs> on, man. Have we been saying <laughs> Negro the whole time?" I said, "Whoa, whoa." Right. Right. Yeah, so you know, just to get that bomb right now. How Chief Biko broke it down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they got. On, on president level, he down here in his county talking about, oh, the Negroes. The Negroes. Right, right. Who the Negroes? <laughs> the freedmen? So what, so what, I'm, what I'm seeing as well is how full of shit and how much they lie, mm. right? This is just bad communication because we know they got three branches of government. Right. They've got the executive branch where the president resides. They've got the judicial branch, which is where their Supreme Court resides, and they have their legislative branch where their Congress resides. The military, the naval, and the militia take direct orders from the president or commander in chief. What the fuck is a special field order? Does that come out of the judicial branch, the legislative yeah. branch? And it didn't come from the president. This is coming from a general in the military. So yeah, my question to you, order. Chief Black Coat, is Correct. can a goddamn general through a special field order make this shit like it's law? Because this, go ahead. What, what's your? Nah, yeah, I mean, y'all seen it. Special field orders, that's, that's still a thing today. A special field order being whatever that special field order is. Whenever we go into whatever district or any country, any county, wherever we are, this is a special field order. Yes, these are generals um, pretty much making directions or you know, laying law down as far as what they got power over or what they're overseeing. So they're, like I said, they're, they're getting big headed here. No one the president to throw on the bag if they're doing the right job. So they're, again, with the plan with lies, again, yeah, this is, that that like you said, you got to get her. The communication is bad. Now you got a general talking about his Negroes is free. Bossman, they said, what, what, what we're talking about. So, uh, again, uh, a general is not the president. So he, He's out, of, he's out of alignment. And he's Correct. talking about acts of war, but the president, Andrew Johnson, said it's a civil rebellion. It's a civil mm -hmm. rebellion. He's exactly. 
So there's a lot of contradiction going on. A here. lot of contradiction. <laughs> it's a lot. And that's why I can understand people that read books because in these districts, people are highlighting what's going on within a district. So the, the history on this land is different. We speak from coming from the South on the coast. What California had going on, what Texas had going on, what North Dakota had going on. Hey, we got to read it. But as far as what the president is saying, it's from his standpoint, overseer. Yeah, you, this is a whole bunch of ball games going on. Well, they try, they're trying to, you know, level out, but it's, you know, they're, the generals are coming off as, no, this is what's going on now. We just, the president's we just, like, ah. And we just using their their own uh their own structure, their own checks and balances. We know right. again the su the supreme law of the land is the treaty. This isn't a treaty. We right. know that the supreme uh, officer of their their uh, their military force is the president, the commander in chief. So again, but they're, they're, they showed us their structure. Yet they have again another rogue military. This is this in particular a general or something. Uh, going off of script, just like we saw in those treaties of the Treaty of mm, Moultrie Creek, Payne's Landing, signing things mm, that gross. they didn't have the authority to do. Right. So, I mean, it kind of just shows they really didn't have all their shit together. Again, mm -hmm. they were, they're showing another power struggle that is pretty much you can see happening in Ukraine and Russia. Right, the infighting. Yeah, this is the infighting. This mm -hmm. ain't got nothing to do with us, but we just highlighting Right, that as well, the contradictory of it. Right, we're within the system now. One variable land, one variable that we forgot. I just want to add one more to this algebraic equation. Mm -hmm. There's a there's a Seminole War. There's the third Seminole War that never ended. What if this general is getting his ass whooped, and he's like, you know what? I'm gonna have to create my own goddamn special field order and tell these niggas, y'all got all of this over here. <laughs> you feel me? Damn what the commander in chief talking about, because I'm in the field. I'm getting my ass handed to me. I need something. <laughs> y'all can here. have Savannah, y'all can have Hilton Head, y'all can have Florida. X. I'm gonna take my ass back up north. <laughs> now, look at the date, 1865. We just read two documents from 1866. Who's to say when his ass went back up north and was like, look, this is what I wrote because you ain't fucking with them niggas down there. Right. And now their government had to get a plan together and roll out the Freedmen's Bureau Act and then roll out the 1866 Civil Rights Act. So yeah, right. this little special field orders because he was getting his ass whooped down. So like, y'all could have Charleston. Damn. Y'all could have Rice Fields. No, you, know? you said it. <laughs> you just said it. You just, no, you, you just said it. You yep. said it because, um, again, this is a special field order, and what's going on here? <laughs> this is my special. Hey, hey you said it. Um, hey. Man, I you said so much. I can't even. I can't even get back let to me, what I wanted to hit on. Go ahead, you go. Let me let me jump in because you you basically just highlighted it. He, he like you said. He who to say that he didn't go back to the president and say, look, man. Uh, I don't know. I thought we were supposed to be fighting against some Europeans. I don't know who these other folks. Well, I know who they are. But they was whooping our ass, dog. So um, we going to need this Freedmen's Bureau Act to suppress their ass coming out of what? The, the War Department. And we also going to need this Civil Rights Act. Uh, that way we can deputize some of these Europeans and get, you know, try to try to get them one on one. Because this mass shit, dog, they whooping our ass. So we need to make sure we can corner them off, rope them off, get our people to be 40 acres around their people. And then just pick them apart as we go. Fake like we're going to do business. You know, do something because we can't come straight up the middle with it. We can't do that. And that's what I was going to say. I'm glad, I'm glad that you guys get her bought up back to the point. This is mm -hmm. during the third similar where it never happened. These are wars going on. So that 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 analogy that he just presented about Mr. Uh, Special Field Order number 15, he's probably up there like, look, man, this is what I need to do down there to get shit straight. It's, he hit it on the nail when it went into that analogy. You know, if the one that it, all of this is just I'm trying, I'm trying to get civil here. Yep. We even see certain words like uh what was I just saw? Chief Quiet uh, Water, what's your thought on it? You got you got to bring the feminine balance to this. What's your thought on what we talk about right now? 
No, I think you nailed it. I think because this was dated before 1866, that's probably what took place. Um, he had to find a way out some kind of way <laughs> because he was getting his ass beat and he right. needed some type of um, some type of way to get up out of it. So he was probably giving them some of everything and then they had to come back and clean it up after the fact and get more order, I guess you you could say, in regards to how they saw fit to move forward. So that's what I see. Facts, facts. And I don't want to harp on this too long. I know we've been to close out, but definitely just want to highlight at this one point, because again, it just, again, highlights exactly what Chief Alligator stated. Uh, at Buford, Hilton Head, Savannah, uh, Fernandina, St. Augustine and Jacksonville, the Blacks may remain in their chosen or accustomed locations, but on the islands and in the settlements hereafter to be established, no white person, whatever, unless military <laughs> officers and soldiers detailed on duty. It's so hot again, over there. It's basically it's, it's, hot, over <laughs> it's hot over there. Don't yeah, they use it, Negro. Folks. They use it, Black. They, they use like, it. <laughs> they like, what y'all wanted us to call it? They said Negro. Black, 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 the Blacks. Shit, uh, what, what, should, I don't even, whatever they want to be called, Negro blacks, it don't matter, right? Don't fuck with them people over there. Look, mm -hmm. only look, I, look, hey, let me keep it even more hundred, man. They got a bunch of Mike Vicks, Lamar Jacksons, <laughs> Bo Jackson. <laughs> All we know is there's some dark skinned niggas running four two that can shoot. Thanks. Give them whatever they want over there. <laughs> <laughs> running a four two that can shoot. Look. <laughs> and, and will be permitted to reside and the sole and exclusive management of affairs will be left to the free people themselves. <laughs> they say, like, we ain't trying to fuck with these folks. Wow. But again, this is just coming from a general. We see that they ain't going to leave us alone. He respected the, he respected mm -hmm. the muscle, but he like, look here, dog. I respect <laughs> it, but I don't know a bit, dog, going gonna to roll with this, but I'll write this up for y'all, but I don't think they going for it. But we'll see. So and I just if, wanted if you, talk, if you talk to your family members, uh, because one one side of my family goes back to Savannah. And anytime you go to Savannah and you deal with our group of people, they always it's like subconsciously they always know that Hilton Head was us. You just saw it in that special field order where even back then it was like we can't take it from them. Like you can't give me something that I already had. But that general is like, yeah, y'all can keep Hilton Head. But whenever you go to Savannah, every first thing everybody tells you is go to Hilton Head in South Carolina. That that now we understand. Again, you're the American. That really was you. So when you see Europeans now living in Hilton Head, yeah, through their military, through their Freedmen's Bureau Act, through their 1866 Civil Rights Act, they took your shit. No different than what Ukraine and Russia is going through right now. Mm -hmm. Ukraine got their independence from them in the 90s. Now Russia's trying to make them back a part of the Soviet Union. At some point on this land, the American has to stand up and be like, look, we're going back to Confederacies, bro. All this nation shit y'all got going on, this nation shit is new. These invisible lines you drawing on land, this is Canada, this is Mexico, this is the United. All this shit is make believe. Right. Back, back. I think we can close out on that one. <laughs>